Hi, how you doing? Justin here and welcome to part two of my little Legato Primer series. Today we're going to be looking at flick-offs, which if you've been following the series so far and you've done the hammer-ons, you've probably found that relatively simple. Most people don't like doing the flick-offs. Now, we're going to be really pushing the flick-offs this time, and I want to talk a little bit about the kind of the mechanics of what's going on and how you should practice it in order to get the notes sounding nice and clear, because that's the really important uh, part of this. But we'll do all of that in a close-up. We're going to be using exactly the same G major scale, uh, three note per string, box one. So let's get to a close-up and check it out. Okay, so just a quick little bit of revision. First of all, the G major scale, uh, three note per string, box one. You should have been practicing these hammer-ons like this. Now what we're going to be doing today is exactly the opposite of that. So we're going to be doing flick-offs, the same, exactly the same idea but using flick-offs on every string. So we're going to start with the little finger down and then flick and flick. Now this is already for many people going to be pretty difficult. So the first thing is you want to make sure that the fingers are set before you start. So the first and second finger are down, not necessarily pressing down real hard, but in position, ready to go. Don't be tempted to kind of let them all slide up like that, or you just won't be able to flick off to the right note. So at least that second finger needs to be in position when you play the first one. Probably first finger is a good idea to be pretty much in position, ready to go as well. You're going to pick, and it's flick. Okay, it's really important that you, do, you don't lift it. Okay, if you lift it, you just don't get as much note. The second note, this second, the note played with the second finger just won't be clear enough. So try and get used to the idea of that little finger flicking down. You also need to make sure that, that first finger is muting all of the strings as well, because if that's laying, sitting up too much and you flick with the little finger, well, actually, I have to pull it down too far. Flick those other strings. They, they're likely to ring out if you're loud and with a lot of gain anyway, but it's really important that all of the way through that first finger is just resting on all the strings to keep them muted up. So flick, flick, and then again, little finger to second finger, second finger to first finger. It wants to flick down. It's not just lifting it off. Okay, it's flicking it off. That's why I tend to prefer the term flick off rather than pull off, because it's I mean, you are kind of pulling the finger off, but I think flicking it is more a, be a better descriptive term for what's actually going on. So pick, flick, flick. Then you do this, exactly the same thing on the fifth string. Pick, flick, flick. Okay, so. Now again, we do the same thing. We're sticking to the scale. Obviously the shape changes now still four, two, one, but we've moved the first finger up a fret. So seventh fret, fifth fret, fourth fret. So pick, flick, flick. Again, same thing on the third string. Same thing on the second string, just following the scale pattern again. And thinner string. You might want to do that again or not. That's a personal choice. Second string. We're gradually going to be working our way down. <laughs> Sorry, my cat's come to visit me. Hello, puss. How are you? What's wrong? You're hungry or something? Sorry, the cat doesn't normally visit me in the studio. Um, so th at that point, I was trying to do it like really carefully to make sure the notes are good, and I wasn't really paying attention to the time. And that's okay, I think, when you first start to just be really thinking, getting those notes so that they're ringing out really clearly. Sometimes you can hear this on, it's, it's almost sometimes doing a little bit of string bend. You don't really want that to happen. You want to think of it just trying to get the notes really nice and clear every time. Trying to stop it, you know, if you're here and you're, you've got these sort of strings ringing out sound, you really want to avoid that. So you want to be aware of the muting and kind of use this slow, careful practice to be developing that as well. Once you feel confident that you're getting the notes nice and clear, then you want to stick it to time. So it'll just be one trip left, two trip left, three trip left, four trip left, trip left, two trip left, three trip left, four trip left,
Yeah, doing that with a metronome is a really good idea because the, the challenge there is really trying to keep it nice and even. You don't want to have like... Or... You, d you don't want to be mucking up the order. You don't want to be mucking up the rhythm. You want to try and keep it as consistent as you can. And that is the challenge, to keep it really even... That's kind of more difficult than you'd think if you're really, really focused on trying to keep it at even. I'm maybe I'm super self-critical, but I'm always hearing notes being a little bit late or a little bit early, and you know that's what I work on when I'm doing these kind of exercises is just trying to keep it, trying to keep the rhythm of it really as consistent as I can. Okay. Once you're feeling confident with that, I'd recommend you divide your practice time into doing the, the hammer-ons and then the flick-offs. But I'd stick with that for at least a week and I wouldn't try and combine them yet. So just do hammer-ons. Then flick-offs. You should expect for these flick-offs to feel harder, right? Considerably harder. I meet students quite regularly that just really say, like, I can't do it. You can do it, and it is just going to be a matter of perseverance and really just taking your time nice and slow, trying to get the mechanics of these, the flicking feeling. Okay, that's what you're after. And it's, again, um, it's not quite the whole truth because when you do it a lot faster... They dance a little bit more, but it's you. Could, I think you can only get to that point by practicing the flick-off motion, so that when it does go faster, you, you've got that kind of the right feeling in place. It really wants to be nice and clear and nice and even. That's the really key thing there. So I'd recommend at least a week, if not two weeks, just working on the flick-offs before you start incorporating the hammer-ons again. Really make sure that you're keeping the notes as even as you can in velocity, in volume. Really think about making sure that your time is even, that the distances between the notes are consistent. In this case, we're looking at triplets. So one triplet, two triplet, three. You don't want one triplet, two triplet. It's got to be consistent as you can. And that's... For me, anyway, that's the, usually the hardest part. Also, while you're practicing things really slowly, it's a good idea to be thinking about keeping the notes nice and clear and thinking about this, uh, you know, muting with this part of your hand and the underneath of your finger so that you don't get unwanted open strings ringing out because as soon as you start playing faster or more complicated ideas, you'll be more focused on that and you won't have as much uh, attention time to be thinking about those extra strings ringing out. So nice and slow, careful practice. It really is about developing the right technique slowly and consistently and carefully. And then when you've got it, then start speeding it up. So you should, I wouldn't be recommending that you're doing these exercises really fast, right? That's not the point. The point at this stage is getting the technique right, getting the mechanics right, making it feel comfortable, getting used to the stretch and being able to do it consistently and well then worry about speeding it up later. Because you wouldn't play this as an exercise. Well, you could do, but it, it's not particularly musical. And I think that part of the, the journey of this, you'll go through a stage where you want to play the scales really fast because you can, and that's fine. But eventually you want to kind of break out of that and just be, you know, really thinking of it in a much more musical kind of a context. But, you know, it's kind of normal. I definitely had a period where I just wanted to play this stuff really fast because I'd figured out how I could and that was exciting. But you should probably get through that and then get into more musical ideas. Anyway, uh, next up we're going to be looking at playing the scale up and down in even 16th notes, which presents another selection of challenges. So I hope you'll join me for that lesson very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.